All right, all right. Grace, mercy, and peace from him who is and was and is to come very soon, I'm certain. This is Rogue Diabetic, and welcome to the Digital Wilderness. Okay, so I just wanted to get a real quick video out for you all on YouTube. Um, so I'm just going to... The first thing I wanted to show you guys is my feed. So we've got on the right hand, the top right hand. I guess as I'm looking at it, I don't know how it's going to show up for you guys, but... Um, this one right here. This one caught my eye. Because... I mean, it, it's posturing, you guys, but it's it, it just it, it's just interesting. There's so, some of this stuff is like, and I and I can't say it. I can't say this phrase down here, but um, you're starting to see more of this slip out into the mainstream. And of course, the the mega Republicans and Trump are posturing as if they're against these um, interventions. That he bought and paid for 500 million doses of, but never mind. Then we've got impeachment article, articles of impeachment on my secretary Mayorkas, DHS secretary Mayorkas. This is so it's insane. Well, what a, what a huge waste of time. A cabinet member, I've never heard of that. Do you think they're going to get an impeachment in the or a conviction in the Senate on it? Um. And then we got, look what white people are being blamed for now by Mark Dice. So that's more Mark whining about, you know, white people being blamed for something. To get the white people fired up and then, you know, and I'm sure, you know, it's just more of, like Mark's an agent too. Okay, Mark is on the, Mark is all part of the, part of the, um, the way they, they're always constantly trying to divide people on the basis of color. So, and I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been hearing a lot more from Trump about that too. About reverse racism and stuff. And to the extent that it exists, it's not good, but it probably really isn't, there probably really isn't a whole lot out there. But anyway... I don't want to go on and on about that. So, so we'll move on to the Israel-Palestine war. Okay, but before we do that, we will go on to my news feed, see what's going up on my news. Suella Braverman, Britain's hardline home secretary, fired as ex- who care? Who cares? Britain's hardline Home Secretary fired his XPM David Cameron. Whatever. Oh, returns to the government. <coughs> okay. Who cares? Iceland braces for potential volcanic eruption. We might have to take a look at this one. Yeah, we have to take a look at this one. Israel Hamas war battle forces pa Palestinians out of hospital in Gaza latest. Okay, so that's a, that's where we want to get to. But notice how that's like all the way at the bottom. Okay, the the, the trivial the trivial shit is at the top. And uh, but does this eruption this this is going to be this I, I think this is worth looking into though just out of curiosity to see what exactly is going on? Okay, for a potential volcanic eruption, what is likely and what, what are the risks? So, I want to know what exactly happened. Declared a state of emergency and more than 3,000 re residents have been urged to evacuate the small coastal town of Grindavik as the country's authorities anticipate the imminent eruption of a volcano in its southwestern peninsula. Scientists monitoring the situation, including those at Iceland's Met Office, observed changes to the situation on Sunday that could indicate magma is moving closer to the surface and concluded on Monday that the greatest area of magma upwelling is an area 3.5 kilometers northeast of Grindavik. 
So nothing's actually happened other than these scientists say there's an upwelling that could that could erupt as a volcano. But based on based on this speculation, they've shut the country down. Yeah, who who knows what kind of a false flag this is? So. So yeah, the Iceland the Iceland volcano is more distraction from this. But this is interesting. Okay, so these two things are like should be on the top. Medics and patients, including babies, stranded as battle rages around Gaza hospitals. Battles between Israel and Hamas around hospitals forced thousands of Palestinians to flee from some of the last perceived safe places in northern Gaza. Okay, God, once again, you guys, Gaza is 25 miles from north, is 25 miles long. I mean, to speak of a, a northern Gaza, I suppose, yeah. There's parts of it that are farther north and parts of it south, but it's really not like, it's really not like I would say that there's any safe place in Gaza. And where are they going to go? To southern Gaza? And what are they going to do then? Where, where, what, what are the, are there enough hospital beds down there? Won't Hamas just pull back with them? If Hamas are the, you know, the, the people that they say they are? Okay. In the meantime, let's take a look at this. How many Palestinian civilians has Israel murdered? Okay, this graphic shows fatalities from conflict since 2008, cumulative deaths. Palestine, 18,600. Israel, 1,500 plus. So we're looking at 12 to 1, a 12 to 1 ratio. And this is broken down by year, 12,254 since October 7th. And 12,045 since Israelis since October 7th. So you're talking about a 10 to 1 here, roughly, almost. And it varies by year, but it's always it's always disproportionate. And it, it really, like this is like the closest. But even this one is 612, 8, 612 18, 24, 30, 36. This is this is close to seven to one. This was the lowest amount of total aggregate deaths, but you're ten to one, over ten to one, thirteen or fourteen to one, something like that. This one's a little bit more evenly matched: seventeen, thirty-four, four, three, about four to one. Still four to one though. Okay, go, go, going into this, we had been from January 1st, October 6th, we were 10 to 1. So this isn't proportional. Okay, there's no way, there's no way you can tell me that Gaza, and this is injuries. And as we can see, that's disproportionately Palestinian injuries. So you can't tell me anymore, especially after the, the past six weeks. Or so, you can't tell me that they had that there's any offensive capabilities remaining, and if there are, that they couldn't be neutralized. Any, any remaining Hamas resistance, these guys in the tunnels, like they have to keep bombing above ground civilians, like they can't just go into the fucking tunnels and clear them out. But there aren't any tunnels. Okay, those are a fiction. I believe. I suspect. If there are tunnels, there was Israel. Could, they couldn't have Hamas couldn't have built those tunnels if there are any tunnels without assistance from Israel. Okay, without Israel letting the materials and the and the machinery in that you would need to build tunnels. Okay, it takes special heavy equipment to do that stuff. It takes people. What it takes engineers and architects. To build tunnels. 
Okay, there's nobody over 35 hardly left in Israel anymore. And most of those people have been trapped. And so most of those people have been trapped inside of the Gaza Strip for most of their life. I highly doubt Israel. Is anybody's going to school to be an architect, any Palestinian. Okay, the, the, there's a blockade. There's a naval blockade on their coast. Okay, nobody can get in or out of Gaza unless Israel lets them in or out. Of, and nothing can get in or out of Gaza unless Israel lets it in or out. So that means that machine, the, the material to build the tunnels, the machinery to build the tunnels, the rockets, or the machinery and the, and the materials to build the rockets, the, the guns, the, the, the rifles, these small, these automatic small arms that Gaza, I've seen Gaza depicted as being using. Okay, either that's all, either those are like props, and everything that you see is just like, like a bad Saturday Night Live skit, or or Israel, or it's real and Israel gave, but Israel gave them all that stuff. So like, share, subscribe, click the notification bell. I'll leave a comment in the comment section. I'm out.